this is Sifu Nico's podcast. I have my father, Leroy Alsup, on here with us. Um, I'm going, I know all about him, but I'm going to have him tell you guys uh, about his experience with Tai Chi. Hi. So, um, again, my name is Leroy Alsup. I'm Nick's father. I've been studying Tai Chi for over 40 years. Um, so I began studying Tai Chi in high school. However, my real my real um, introduction was through my first teacher back in 1979, 1983 or 84. His name was Abraham Leo and out of San Diego. And I studied with him for quite a few years. Um, it was a one-on-one. -on -one. Primarily, I went to his house and um, practiced with him. Um, However, in 1999, I was introduced to the Young family at um, a seminar that was held in um, Winchester, Virginia. And um, that is when I changed my presentation, my philosophy, my understanding of Tai Chi and followed the Young family themselves. And so that's been since 1999. Um, I... Yeah, I've had uh, several seminars that I've gone to with him. Um, he's been to uh, my school and done seminars several times. Um, and so in August or September of this year, I asked um, um, to whether or not um, being a disciple was possible, and I was immediately accepted by the family as a disciple. So I'm officially a disciple of the of the Young family at this point in time. That's beautiful. I mean, when you told me that news, I was just elated for you because you and I had always talked about being a disciple and working uh, in his art for years. So I'm just so yeah. happy for you. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. So the cool thing is, guys, this is my father, so I have a special relationship with him, but I want you guys to get to know him. And the point of my podcast is just this, is to talk about Tai Chi, everything Tai Chi, and even martial arts in general. It's not just restricted to that. Um, so I'm just going to dive right in. Uh, so what, what I love about Yang style Tai Chi is how balanced and rooted it is. And that's what really kept me into the art, uh, you know, I, I always over the years heard that it was so linear and uh, very soft and not really good for Marshall. And of course, my father here, you know, has proven that wrong and young and young June has proven that uh, wrong. So, uh, Leroy, why do you think people don't have, uh, you know, think that young style is very soft or not good for Marshall, you know, things of that nature? Well, so most people who um, proclaim to be teachers in, in, in Tai Chi, and it doesn't really matter what family they follow, you know, they go and take a month, even a year of training, and then put out their shingle as a teacher. And it just takes so much more time than that in order to get the deep understanding necessary to really begin to teach this art. Right. Um, you know, it has so much more than just form associated with it. Um, you know, of course, push hands, which is the transitional point between um, doing form and learning how to use this art martially. Um, and, um, and fortunately, you'll find people who believe that doing push hands alone is going to um, give them that skill. And it doesn't, especially not the way that um, we do that art here, the push hands here. Um, there is no understanding of movement. It's all, you know, let's grapple. And, and while Tai Chi is a great grappling art, there is a lot of movement. And um, you need to understand the uh, intricacies of, of yin and yang. You need to understand the... Um, the, the intricacies of the 10 essentials. And if those 10 essentials aren't incorporated into young family, then you're really not doing the art. You're doing something else. And uh, which is okay. I mean, we, we do what we do, you know, but if you're doing Tai Chi, you need to be following the 10 essentials. You need to understand, understand the applications, 
uh, and how they interact with push hands and therefore with other people. You know, um, people tend to think that push hands is about winning and it's not. Um, it's not about winning. It's about learning. It's about understanding the energies. It's not about who oh, can I push this person over or that person over. If I'm pushed when I'm doing push hands and um, the energy is more than I can deal with at the moment, I step back. It's OK. I don't mind. You know, it's because I haven't um, learned anything by going into a muscle to muscle competition with somebody because that's not what it's about. Right. You know? so it seems that um, for me, and uh, again, again, I'm a little, little biased because, because I've been, been doing Young Style for 27 years. years. Um, it, it seems, seems to me that, that the more important thing with this art that we love is developing the fundamental skills is developing the root the balance the breath the, the forms rather than uh you know getting into it for that physicality so i think maybe that's where it's lost going back to my question i guess that's where it's lost is maybe people see that softer side visually being studied and they don't think that it's applicable to push hands or to those other arts or things like things of that nature. Sure. And no, I understand what you're saying. Um, so, uh, yeah, most people don't under understand the um, unification of the soft, right? Uh, coming from the ground, um, manifest in the, in the, in the Dante and, and then applied, you know, the, uh, people, understand, people, I hear people talking about that all the time, but I don't see that applied very often. And, and so, you know, it's very easy to, to, um, get frustrated in this art and, and walk away. You know, I've that, seen that countless times, you know, that is an understatement. Right. So, <laughs> um, so I think that's one of the biggest challenges with Tai Chi is that people just don't understand what it is that they should be focusing on, right. you know, and so um, they, they're lost, you know, they do the form and they say, well, I can't beat anybody with the form and you can't, you know, the form isn't designed to teach you how to fight. The form is designed to teach you how to move. I, I holistically agree with that. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget a hard learned lesson that I had as a young kid um, dealing with the real world. Uh, I remember, and before I get to that, I remember young June telling everybody in one of our seminars uh, that we hosted, uh, it's going to take 10 years to be able to use this art to fight with. Now I had no idea what that meant because as a kid, I was like, man, I, you know, I've been doing this since I was six. This, I feel like I can use this art to fight with. Um, but little did I know what he was meaning is it takes that much intensive understanding for the principle, just to be a walking testament to the art. And then you can start to embody that martial, uh, you know, self because you, yes. yeah, you have to have it. It needs to be like breathing where you don't think about it. You're just doing it because it's an essential thing, you know, to live. And so when he had said that in my mind, I'm like, you know, okay, whatever. It's not going to take that much time. And then I realized, you know, whenever uh, I didn't do so hot in a street fight, <laughs> um, that it's truly has to be second nature because my, whenever I got in an altercation, my, my body didn't react. I could think about some of the stuff that I wanted to do, but my body didn't react because I didn't take, take that, that time. time those, those, let's, let's say, say 10, 10 years, years that I didn't take, take that, that time to really, really invest, invest in those fundamentals, uh, you know, and, and then, then go, go to, to that fighting, fighting aspect, aspect, I thought. And I think this is a common thing in the, in, in, uh, in the Tai Chi realm, and I'm glad to share this with everybody because – got to kill the ego. You got to put that aside and, and, and realize that these are just life lessons. But I realized at the moment that uh, I didn't defend myself and I got punched in the face and couldn't defend myself, uh, that this art was bigger 
than that physical altercation. This art needed to be a second nature thing for me before I could even take it out to the real world. As a young kid, I was, you know, energetic and uh, in people's faces, yeah. this and that. You know that. I mean, I'm not preaching, right. preaching to anybody, you know, as far as you being my father. But getting back to that is I had to take this to the lab every single day and practice and study. And then it became second nature for even if someone was trying to reach to grab my shoulder and say hi, where I would turn and greet them you know, uh, in a friendly manner, because now that's second nature, any incoming force that I feel and energy after that intensive training becomes just second nature. You begin to see like Tai Chi and feel like Tai Chi and it became, be, you, be, you become the art. So if I, could, if I could clarify what I was trying to get to is a lot of people that start in this art, um, whether, you know, if it's for martial arts, they have to realize it is a Lifetime investment. <laughs> uh, it is. Right, because you know. Yeah, one, one thing that I find very interesting is, you know, people say, well, you can't fight with it. Well, <laughs> first of all, you can. But more importantly, um, if you're realistic, how many people fight regularly? <laughs> very, very few people fight regularly. You know, um, maybe when you're in high school, you might get in a few confrontations or in grammar school. But once that happens, there isn't a lot of fighting that goes on in your life. So you have to you have to ask yourself, what is it that you're really looking for? You know, for me, it was. Yes, of course, the fighting was important to me, but longevity was even more important. And right. health is even more important. Right. Those things are the keys for me in terms of what Taiji means. Can I fight with it? Yes. But, you know, I'm not interested in going to jail by her. You know, I'm, I'm interested in living my life comfortably, happily. And Taiji for me is a key particle in that. Um, I can't I can't say how much my health has changed from the point of focusing on this art and not focusing on it because there are times when you just you know you take a break and you notice the difference um yeah. you know your body certainly will the moment you go back to practicing tai chi your body will tell you you have not been doing this for a while and um and it's frustrating it's physically demanding um so all of these things are incorporated into what Taiji represents. It's not just fighting. Okay, so I like that you said what Tai Chi represents because that right there is a big, it's a big topic because when you get into Tai Chi, you might be thinking of it from one perspective. I'm going to do Tai Chi for help or I'm going to do Tai Chi for fighting or this or that. But the reality of it is that Tai Chi it should engulf your lifestyle in the way that you are and it should it should be a part of your essence rather than to focus on one element of it to just allow it to become you and you to become it right is that is that what you're getting at absolutely that's what i'm getting at uh, tai chi is should be um, if you're serious about it, it should be a life changing event. It should be something that incorporates your life from now until you die. Um, you know, and, and it should always be a learning experience. Anyone who says they're a master, and I've heard people say, well, I, I'm a master of three or four arts, and Tai Chi happens to be one of them. And I, I call BS when I hear it. Um, it takes a lifetime just to learn this art. Uh, yeah. and, and and it takes all of your effort in order to become decent at this art. <laughs> I don't say master it. I just say become decent at it. Right. Uh, right. I could, I could not agree more. Um, so I think we, we went pretty deep into that, which is exactly why I'm doing this podcast. But what... I want to know is if I am a stone cold beginner and I, I walk, walk into, into your, your class, class what, what does, does that, that look, look like, like for me? me? I want, I want, I want everybody, everybody else to know. know. You know, you know what, what does, does that look, look like, like for me? me? I, don't I don't know anything about Tai Chi. Chi. I don't I even have a preconceived notion, notion that it's for fighting or for health. I'm just walking in and looking for a program 
and, and it happens to be a Thai, Thai sign for Tai Chi. Chi. What does what, that look like for me? What you know? How do I? How do you go about teaching it? What do you give out? Stuff like that. Well, uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is um, introduce you to the ten essentials, right? And we'll talk about theory because without the ten essentials and some theory, it's going to be nebulous. It's not going to have any any real contextual um, um, gathering for you. You're not right. going to, you know, you know you, you're going to be doing some movements, you know, but you can go and to a, to a dance school and do movement, <laughs> right? You know, but if right. you, you know, so the first thing you need to do is understand how your body works. You know, uh, you know that we've always said um, that if you look at an infant, mm. That infant spends most of this time internalizing. It's looking to do the one thing that it sees the giants around it doing. That is get up and walk. But the moment that that child learns how to walk, it removes the focus on itself and it starts focusing on the world around it, trying to categorize the world. I mean, that's what teachers do. They help students categorize the world. Right. So you don't pay I'm sorry. I was just saying, so you're saying that you're saying that as a beginner, I walk into your class, we're going to understand the print. We're going to go over the principles and, and I'm going to, I'm going to, you want me as, as if a baby, almost like I, I don't know anything I'm taking in everything around me. Um, and that's kind of where you want my mind to be, or I should be anyways. Absolutely. Um, you know, the first thing you have to do when you walk into my school or, or probably anyone's is, you know, drop off your ego at the door, outside the door, not inside. <laughs> um, and once you walk in, you just have to be a sponge. If you think you know, then you're wasting your time. I love that. I love you know? That. If you if you want to learn, you have to come in with an empty glass. You know, if you come in with a glass that's half full or full, there's nothing I can teach you. Right. That's a powerful statement because and I I know this is a Tai Chi podcast or a martial arts podcast, but this is that goes bigger than just the Tai Chi. I think that's an application for a lot of stuff that you're just trying to learn in general. And Absolutely. You, you know, and you want to you want to be a sponge for it so that you can absorb it. So <clears throat> so then that's a great introduction for someone that's walking in. I mean, they're getting the basics, the fundamental, the principles, uh, learning a lot of stuff about themselves, which I think is truly important about this art. So now tell me. <laughs> go ahead. No, I, I agree. I, you know, so one of the things that um, I noticed, and, and there are very few, there may be one or two students in my history of training people that um, uh, could, could, that understand their bodies. Uh, most people say, well, I understand my body. And I ask them to do a very simple thing and they can't do it. You know, I ask them to walk properly. I ask them to just make a step and do it the way that I asked you to do it. And they can't do it, you know, right. and, you know, and, and so that becomes very frustrating and that becomes now, frustrating primarily because of their ego. Right. Go ahead. And, and I want, I want to really point out what you just said, because that's important is the self under the self awareness is something that we, let's just say we, you and I didn't grow up with Tai Chi. It, it would be very difficult. Uh, actually, we'll take that back. We did grow up with Tai Chi, so it's kind of hard to take it out of ourselves out of that. So, right. so then I'll do this. Someone walks in and they think their hand is here where we tell them to be, but really their shoulder and their elbows are up and they don't feel that. So what you're saying is th they may have their own perspective of where they think their hand is, but they don't have a deeper understanding of the principles and of the connection that it takes for you truly to be in a Tai Chi posture and truly to be relaxed. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely because correct. That was something I think uh, you have to take a step back 
when you're learning this art because it's so fun to go forward. You're like, what's the next move? What's the next move? Oh my God, what's the next move? Um, but you also have to go back to those grass sparrows tail to just posting and stepping out to a single leg or a horse stance because there's, there's nuances, nuances within, within those, those that, that even, even today after my 20 years, years of doing this, this I'm, I'm still, still like, oh, this, this feels, feels different. different. Oh, oh, oh that, that, that ignites, ignites something, something else. else. And, and, and I, I think, think that's because of what you said initially is you, you have, have to, to you have to be uh, leave the ego, leave that out the door. You have to be really like baby like, like really, really primitive, primitive, and, and just, just really take in the feeling, feeling and take in the understanding uh, each time you do it. And that right there is probably the most important thing about Tai Chi is each time you do it should be an experience rather than each time you do it you're just doing because. That that might be <laughs> right. That might be the difference there between Tai Chi and let's say a lot of other arts. Not shaming any arts, never doing that. Just saying that we should experience Tai Chi each time rather than just do it because I know the structure of the movement. Now I know to lift my arm here, so I'm just doing that. But what it should be, and this is what I think, and what you're saying, I, I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. But what you're saying is every time I lift this arm up, I need to feel the energy. I need to understand what it does to my body. I need to expand into it and, 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 and be a part of it rather than, okay, guys, we're doing this move. And then I do it robotically. Oh, absolutely. Um, right. And you have to understand where the energy is coming from. How do I translate that energy from one point to the next point, you know, and how do I continuously keep it moving? You know, those things are difficult to develop, you know. However, as difficult as Taiji is, it's worth it. I and agree. that's the key. You know, it doesn't matter. Everything we do in life is difficult until we learn how to do it. Right. And, um, and, and Taiji is no different. You know, so we have to take the time, look at ourselves and determine, are we willing to get healthy? Are we willing to take the effort what, that it takes to become healthy, to become self-aware? Right. right. These things are what Taiji represent. And if you can't or you won't allow yourself to become aware... Right. You're never going to get it, and you're going to so, walk away. <laughs> then I think that <laughs> I think the big struggle with Tai Chi is what we're talking about is, and I'll say this delicately because I, I, I'm still figuring this out. But is how do I, if this is my motive, how do I sell this what we're talking about in this idea to someone? So they understand the intricacies and they aren't afraid. They're going to be afraid naturally, you know, if that's their, if that's their motive, but you know, they're not fearful of it because it's too much, right? How do we put this together for somebody um, to where they understand the scope of the art or is it more important that they get the scope through the experience? Because, because what I, I guess what I'm getting at is if you say, Nick, Come out and try Tai Chi. In my head, I know what that is. But a beginner might be like, no clue what that is. And then you could easily say it's a Chinese martial art. Now in my head, in that beginner's head, they're going off on these tangents of different things. So how does a Tai Chi instructor, master, teacher uh, simply or not simply explain what Tai Chi is to somebody? Because... Do you, do you say this is a life altering experience and, and you know, you need to invest all this time into it? Or do you simply say, this is Tai Chi, come and learn? Yeah, that's a good question. That, <laughs> I that's know, I challenging. know. Yeah, right. That's challenging, um, you know, because many people have no interest in some a life altering experience. You know, they're very happy with who they are. You know, right. even even though, you know, they, they're destitute. And I don't mean that they don't have money. 
I don't mean that they don't have a fine house. What I do mean is that, you know, they're wondering whether or not they're going to survive to the next day simply because they're caught, you know, they, they don't feel good, you know, and if you can't, if you can't accept the fact that there's a challenge, then there's no way for you to learn anything, right? The first thing you have to do when you come into class is recognize that you're coming in this class because there is something here for you. Right. I happen to believe, you're right, I happen to believe that Tai Chi is one of the best exercise regimens that you can do holistically. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, you can lift weights, but that is very, it, it's, it's very limited. And what I mean by that is that when you, when you lift weights, you're focusing on one aspect of your body, whether it's your arms or your legs or your abs, you're focusing on one primary aspect of your body and say, I'm going to get this strength. I'm going to get this strong. Right. Whereas in Tai Chi, the whole body is impacted constantly. There is no um, segregation of, um, of, of parts of the body. It's holistic. All of your body has to be involved. When you, do the ten, when you learn the 10 principles and you start to en engage with them, you find out that it requires your whole body from the tip of your head to the bottom of your feet to be engaged. Right. So I, I think what, what you just said in a nutshell, and I'm going to sum it up, is it's a mental, physical, spiritual, emotional investment. It's a roller coaster of all that put together. It's not yes. one right, right, right. Absolutely. Right. And so that that can be a lot for someone to take in on day one. Right. You know, I, I know I know that's not what they're getting necessarily. Day one is all of that, but it could be a lot for someone to invest in. Uh, because simply it's not immediately rewarding. You know? That's correct. It is not. <laughs> it, it is not you know, immediately rewarding. It's so, immediately painful. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you're doing it right, immediately you'll say, oh, I'm working out. I may right. not be moving a lot, but I am working out. Sweat starts beating off the head. You know, you start <laughs> shaking, all of these. And, and, and it doesn't take much to get you to that point. No. Right? So I, I find something interesting about what we're talking about because uh, – the external way of moving is phenomenal for a beautiful physique. If you want a nice looking physique or, or something like that, and even, you know, cardiovascularly, you can run and stuff and that's helpful. But what we're talking about is not having an instant gratification. Meaning if I start running today, I might be able to run 0.5 miles, but maybe in three weeks or four weeks, I might be able to hit that mile. Well, what I'm thinking in Tai Chi or what I'm, what I'm, and I'm kind of you can you can interject in Tai Chi, you don't have that sort of you know gratification because and I, and and for anyone watching, this could be a deterrent, but it could take you a year to understand the first few movements. It could take you three months. It, it, it's it's just dependent on your your investment in the art and nothing is an instant gratification in Tai Chi. And I can say that with, with all assurance that the, the most important thing is understanding you're beginning something. And That's it's, right. <laughs> and it's starting. <laughs> exactly. And it's a world that we're not used to. It's a foreign world of energy, of, of breath work, of spiritual enlightenment, of, you know, connection through my joints, through my channels and chi energy, you know, all the stuff that the common Westerner doesn't hear every day. Because if I say chi energy, uh, <clears throat> a lot of people don't grasp what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, they might be thinking I'm shooting some energy out of my hand uh, or something like that. But that right there is why I think there's not much instant gratification because Chi energy takes a long time to develop and a long time to understand here and in here. And I think, uh, obviously, if we could bottle that and sell it, we'd be billionaires. But 
I think that right there, <laughs> that right there would be the key to walking in a class and understanding this is, this is a world of difference uh, that I'm entering in. I'm left my ego. I don't know what's about to happen, but as a beginner, I'm ready and you, and I am yours, you know, saying that to the art and the teacher and then going on to the next topic with this and we can circle back anytime, but I think the number one deterrent and, and I could be wrong. I think the number one deterrent for Tai Chi is a bad Tai Chi experience. Uh, yes. Well, uh, I think, I, you know, I don't disagree with that, but I think that it's more encompassing. I, I think mm -hmm. that Tai Chi has a very bad rep because there are very bad people. And I don't mean they're bad, like, you know, they want to hurt somebody. They're just yeah. bad in terms of not knowing what the hell they're teaching. Excuse my French, but, you mm -hmm. know, there are very few, few people who really understand Tai Chi. You know, and um, and that, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. You you can go on the Internet right now and find fights between a quote unquote master of Tai Chi and some other fighter of some other style. And they get their butts whipped because they've never experienced fighting. They don't know anything about fighting. They know about health. And they think that what they've done is generate the ability to fight. Fighting takes a long time to learn in Taiji, and it takes so, so then, interaction with other people. So then, what, what we keep what we keep circling into is the physicality of stuff. Meaning, a lot of people go to that fight if they see it uh, getting whooped. If they see Tai Chi getting whooped by MMA or something, they're going to now negate Tai Chi as yeah, that's that's probably not worth my time because. They can't even defend themselves with it. Right. You know, so what I'm getting at is if there was a way, right, to to lay out a list, and I probably could, you and I together could, lay out a list of what you need in a teacher. That way it's like a guide for somebody. Uh, and I'll go ahead and start, and you can add on to it. What I think a, a good teacher and for all you watching and anyone watching, if you guys are really want to get in this art and you want to understand this art, how it should be understood, the depth and the, and the quality of it, I think one of the first major things is finding a good Tai Chi teacher. And that, yeah. starts, with, and that starts with them understanding their experience and understand their lineage. Where do they come from? If they can't answer, hey, are you Yang style? Are you Chin style? Are you Wu? Are you hungry? If they can't answer those things, I think that's a red flag. If they can't tell you the, the major nine joints of your body, I think that's a red flag. If they can't tell you the 10 essentials, uh, and, and, and literally every single art of Tai Chi or uh, a branch of Tai Chi has the 10 essentials. So if you were to walk into a class and say, hey, I'm interested in learning this, boom, and you've never learned the 10 essentials, that's a red flag. You should at least ask questions and, and provoke those things um, so you understand more about the art. Uh, and I think another red flag from a teacher is not breaking down movements. So just taking beginners all the way through the form and then, you know, you just continue to do that because it's going to develop bad habits. So those are some of my things that I think a red flag presents a red flag if you're looking for Tai Chi um, and you're in a class and you haven't been uh, told the lineage, you don't know anything about your nine joints and how to stretch them out. You don't know, uh, you don't know the 10 essentials or at least a couple of them. You don't have to know all of them right away. Just kind of start learning them. Uh, and then just, you know, you're just going through stuff and never having anything broken down, whether it's martially or even just to understand, you know, the martial, just to understand the movements. Um, or just broken down understanding what energy or what stance or, you know, stuff like that. Do you think, do you, yeah. do you think any, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think those are very key to, um, to the success of the student. Right. You need to understand who it is you're dealing with. You know, what are they doing? Watch them do the form. Yeah. 
you know, are they <laughs> leaning over? You know, I mean, you know, there are, there are things that you can look at that immediately tell you whether or not they know what they're doing. And Do that, they now, I'll cut you off because that's from our perspective, though. Right? That's what? That's from our perspective. We're tight. All right. Yeah, I mean, you could, I guess as a beginner, you can walk in and the, and the person could be doing something that looks cool and you think that's, that's good, but right. that doesn't mean that it is. Right. And right. so I guess, I guess there's two things that we can prod here is one from an experienced to an experienced trainer, or uh, uh, martial artist, we can look for those basic fundamentals in a, in a, in a teacher and let you know if they're a good or bad teacher. From a beginner standpoint, I think there should be some skeleton layout of bullet points of basic things that everybody should look for and know and even have some references, right? No, I, I don't disagree. And I think that you laid out, um, uh, you know, the, the bare minimum already, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, that, you know, the... I'll, I'll tell you this before you... Before you go on, I'll tell you this. The most impressive thing that you've ever done that is imprinted in my brain forever is having the biggest dudes I've ever seen in my life push on you and they could not move you. To me, I'm your, I'm your son. So I've seen this over the years. But now I turn my head to the students that are looking at this happen and they literally think, you're some magical stake in the ground that can't be moved. <laughs> and, 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 and so I'm not saying that every teacher has to do that because that's just the way we teach. That's our young style. You know, that's just how we do it. But I think you show proof and, and it, and that's why we have dedicated students. We don't have many, but we have some dedicated students because they've seen this, uh, this old man can't get pushed over by this young buck or, uh, you know, <laughs> these basic connections that you show. So I think, and I'm just, and I'm highlighting you because, you know, you're, you're my dad and you've I've worked with you my whole life, but that is the most impressive thing I've ever seen as a kid growing up is seeing you not get pushed over by guys that were two times your size. Um, and, and to me, I think that that's an important element of, displaying control and balance and, and skill. And, and that right there from a beginner's eye or a, a, an advanced or immediate eye is, is important. So if I walk into a class as a beginner and I've seen you do that and I try it with the teacher and they flop over and push, you know, and fall over, I think that that would be a basic standard of connection that they should have. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I wouldn't recommend that a student go in and challenge the no, teacher. No, I don't agree. <laughs> to, I don't agree with that either. But I guess I guess the kid in me, the kid in me is saying that that was the most impressive thing I've ever seen. Right. And there should there to me, I would never respect a teacher in my and this is this is for me, not for you guys. I would never respect a teacher that I could push over with zero effort. And, and they don't have any idea how to redirect or connect or do anything with my energy. That's me. No, that's true. Yeah, that's me. And, and it doesn't ring true to everybody, but I'm just saying there has to be some sort of proof that they are a legitimate teacher that's going to take my Tai Chi and my experience to the next level. And, and I know we could probably ramble on for this for a while uh, because this is, this is affecting directly our art and how we're viewed. No, I agree. I agree. And, um, you know, as you know, I take the students outside on the street sometime and um, I get stares. I get people coming up and asking me about it, you know, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm not one for showing off, as you know. Right. I'm... Uh, I'm a very humble person, and I believe that um, that humility is um, a major part of who I am, and it's a major part of what Taiji is about, humility. Um, now, granted, there are, there's a need. Um, this, this pot here is an example of um, 
of of me getting out in front of people and saying, you know, what I think. Right. But um, that's because you asked me to, not because <laughs> I chose to do it, right? <laughs> yeah, so for, for everybody out there, I, I, I think it was very important that my father was my first person on my podcast. Uh, out of respect, I've learned from him my whole life. Um, the best teacher I've ever had. And, and that's even me saying that being trained by young June to Leroy, I hold high up there. And it was important for me to have you on here because your, your opinion is important to me. And I think the world needs to hear it. I think even if two people listen to this, it, it will affect them differently uh, in their view about the art, because you have over 40 years experience. You are a master of the art in my eyes. You're a disciple of Young June uh, and his entire association. And you represent not only also Tai Chi, but you now represent Yang style Tai Chi. And so True. to me, to me, your word is 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 very important and, and something that people should look back to. So if they're watching this and they're like, well, I want to scroll through this and see what a good teacher should be like, or I want to know what Master Leroy thinks of this, or things like this. Now they can have basic access to that. Reach out to him all you want, ask him questions. You know, uh, uh, he's starting his own uh, uh, online course. If you guys want to join that, you can. See, that's that's what we're here for is to just connect, you know, the Tai Chi connection, get everybody out there, get everybody understanding. Um, not everybody's going to agree with everything that everybody says. That's just the way of the world. And I think that's just how it goes. But I, I think we have something to say. So, Yeah, I, I think we do. Um, you know, I think we have something to say and we certainly have something to teach, you know. And, um, you know, our classes are legitimate. Um, otherwise, I don't think Grandmaster Young Jun would have accepted me as a disciple, you know. <laughs> By that point. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, I, I think that um, what we have, you know, is hundreds of years old, and we teach it like that. I'm a very traditional teacher, um, and that might be part of my challenge. I don't know. But, you know, that's who I am. I'm a very traditional teacher. I believe that everyone that comes to my class um, should walk away with understanding that they didn't have when they showed up you know I, <laughs> what's what's funny to me is uh we just had some new students come in or you know a few new signups and our current students i was teaching everybody and our current students were like oh you haven't worked with Leroy yet and uh because i was teaching them and i said well, okay Leroy will probably be there saturday you can learn from him right and their, rea and their reaction was oh you haven't worked with Leroy yet and then uh, the new student looked over, what does that mean? And I said, oh, you haven't worked with them yet? All right. And then the students were like, be prepared for detail. Be prepared for an experience. Right. And that right there, to me, meant the world. Because I know that they know what he's in for. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And, and, and to me, this is where the art gets tricky. Because there's people out there that sell this art to make money and they want hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students any means necessary. And yes, that would be phenomenal and great for us and you and, and, our, and our name. But I don't think we're willing to dilute and sacrifice quality and for, that, quantity. for quantity. Right. And that could be that could be a, a downfall in some areas, but I think that we can prevail. Uh, I think that we can prevail if we continue to to be authentic. You know. Well, that's that's my expectation. I mean, I think that I'm prevailing whether I have students or not because I'm constantly <laughs> learning. I'm I'm constantly going um, t towards that next step. You know, every door that opens you know, is a major event. But once you start walking across the room, you'll always notice that there's another door at the other side of that room and you have to get to it 
then you have to figure out how to open it. And then you have to walk across that room in order to get to the next door. And it just never stops. It just never stops. And to me, that's what makes it worth my time. I'm not, it's not something I go in and say, okay, I've mastered this, you know, let's, you know, let's go on to the next one. No, I'm constantly learning more, constantly. And, and that, you know, and, and not just because I have, you know, in my opinion, the best teacher in the world, in my personal opinion, the best teacher in the world. Right? right? But I'm learning these things just through my own actions. I th- oh, wait, what is that? Okay, yeah, that's what I was looking for. You know, that Don Tien is now moving the way that I want it to move, you know, and I'm coordinating it with my feet. And now all of a sudden, my hands and my, my, my Don Tien and my feet are working in unison. Uh, you know, so it's always something right. new, right. always something new to learn. Well, I, I think I think we've summed it up and, and talked about a lot of stuff for beginners, for uh, advanced individuals, and I think we should have a few more conversations on this podcast. So I'm always willing. All right. Well, thank you, Sifu Master Leroy. <laughs> um, I know Sifu. I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, if anyone wants to reach out to. Uh, Master Leroy, you guys can email me, text me. Uh, if this is on social media, just shoot me an inbox. Uh, if you find him on social media, it's Leroy also. Just shoot him a message. If you guys have any questions, uh, you guys want to learn uh, from either or, please send us a message. Please share this and get this message out. Uh, tai Chi is important to me. I've been doing it my whole life. I had the pleasure of learning it from my father, who is my first podcaster uh and i think that this should be you know experienced throughout the entire world and uh i at least want to start with this about talking about it with different enthusiasts and different practitioners and and masters and arts and stuff like that so anything anything to say before we leave um thank you thank you